I think as a, a young Christian who I came to understand some of the central truths of the Christian faith, uh, and I think this happens with a lot of young Christians, we, we, we're very happy and, and thankful, and I, I believe it's, a, it's legitimate and heartfelt, we're thankful for what Christ has done for us, that our sins are forgiven, uh, that we're going to heaven, and we, and we have these truths in our, in our minds, but uh, I think it was really after studying uh, Thomas Goodwin on the heart of Christ in heaven towards sinners on earth that mm -hmm. I came to love the person of Christ uh, more, not just what he's done for me, but who he is. And, and that was a, a, a significant turning point in my life where it wasn't just about knowing what the truths of the Christian faith were, what Christ has done for me, but actually knowing about Christ in such a way that um, it brought out a much more uh, heightened appreciation for Him in His person, not just His work. Uh, and I think that's probably where a lot of Christians need to get to that point where they, they love Him, not just what He's done for them. Does, you, is that, does that in any way... Oh, that resonates with my understanding of things. And um, <coughs> I got into that perception by a different route, but I think it's the same perception that um, I have in myself, and thank God that I have. Uh, I think I told you that um, I was brought up in a form of nominal Christianity where God didn't do anything. He was just there as furniture. And um, it was uh, quite dramatic, in fact, when I woke up to the fact that I was in, I was in reality keeping Christ at bay when he was calling me to uh, acknowledge him as, well, I wasn't, I wasn't clear at first on his saviourhood, but acknowledge me as Lord and Master. And it was through realising that I was dodging that issue that I became, really for the first time in my life, deeply convicted of sin, because it is sin to keep the Lord Jesus at bay when he wants to be your Lord and Master. And you, in effect, are saying no to him all the time and dodging the issue. So there came a point of conversion for me in a, sterly, a fairly standard fashion. Uh, not simply, um, I mean, because it happened at the end of a sermon when the congregation was singing just as I am, although in fact it did happen so, <laughs> but um, because I realized for the first time that uh, being a Christian meant that Jesus was your Lord and the Father of Jesus was and must ever be your God. And of course that isn't saying it very well because in terms of divinity uh, the Father and the Son are on the same footing. But um, just as the Lord Jesus lived and uh, spoke and thought and um, always um, presented himself in terms of total submission to the Father's will, um, so I realized, well, this is what life must mean for me now. And uh, it was quite a sudden and quite a drastic change of mind. Um, well, thank God it happened. And uh, the, rec the, the, the recognition, you see, came right at the start quite strongly. Being a Christian means being a disciple with and under 
the Lord Jesus, uh, just as being a pioneer Christian um, was for Jesus' own disciples before the word Christian actually came to be used. But um, right from the start, the sense of uh, the Lordship relation was um, really very strong in my heart and my mind. And it meant that for the next few years after it had happened, happened, I may say, when I was uh, 18 and was just beginning at Oxford, but for the next few years I was consciously trying to catch up um, all the years that I'd wasted, and they had been properly wasted, I think one can fairly say, um, thinking I was a Christian. And I was completely wrong because I was completely not a Christian in virtue of the fact that I was evading the Lordship of Jesus and treating the Father of Jesus, as I said, simply as scenery, background to my life, simply there as a frame of reference. But in terms of a personal relationship, or anything like a personal relationship, uh, I was no, I'd been nowhere. Mm. Now I felt I had to catch up, and the sense of uh, being personally committed to Jesus and his Father was very strong. And it's never ceased to be very strong, but uh, in those days it was very strong with the with the tang of novelty, because I'd had uh, several years, you see, while I was passing through adolescence, years in which I'd thought that I was a Christian, but as I say, God was static, and Jesus was, uh, well, he was there, yes, he was the Lord Jesus, but I was evading him, though I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Mm.